Now let us take one example to understand the Norton's theorem in a better way. Now we can see this question here, this network is given to us, what we have to find out? We have to find out the value of Norton's current and Norton's resistance across the terminals A and B. Always whenever you are going to realize or you can say whenever you are going to analyze a circuit, you have to find out the value of Norton's current or Norton's resistance across any two terminals. So here the terminals are A and B and you have to find out the value of Norton's current. Now first of all in step number one, what do you have to do? You have to find out the value of Norton's current that means the current across AB terminals and what do you have to do? You just have to short circuit these two terminals as I have told you that Norton's current is nothing but the short circuited current across the terminals A and B. Now in step number one what do you have to do? You just have to short circuit the terminals A and B means we have to find out the value of Norton's current and to find out the value of Norton's current what do you have to do? You just have to short circuit these two terminals and then you are going to find out the short value of short circuit current. So here the whole circuit would remain as it is. This was what? This was 36 volts and then after that here is one resistance present 3 ohms then 6 ohms and then I have short circuited these two terminals a and B. I hope it is clear to you and now what I have to find out? I have to find out the value of this short circuited current that is Norton's current. So now this is the circuit. Now I have to get the value of I n. Now as you can see here this voltage is providing current and if I say that this is the value of current I. Now this current is having two paths. I can say that this current can go to this direction or this direction. Now here across this path you are not getting any resistance. This is a short circuited path and here you are getting a resistance of 6 ohms. And as you know that current always follows a res least resistive path. Current always follows a least resistive path. So here the, this whole current flows towards this side and no current is going to flow towards this side. So the value of the Norton's current would be nothing but this current, this current I. So this current would be given by voltage upon resistance and the value of voltage here is 36 volts divided by resistance and here you can see that resistance is only 3 ohms because this resistance uh, current is not going to take this path so only 3 ohm resistance so I can find out the value of I here so here the value came out to be 12 amperes so this is the value of the short circuited current across the terminals A and B or I can say that this is the value of the Norton's current now then in the next step what I have to do okay all right first I'll write down the value of I n came out to be 12 amperes now in the next step we have to find out the value of resistance. Now in step number 2 find Norton's resistance Rn and you know that Rn is nothing but the open circuited resistance across the terminals A and B. So what do you have to do? Again the same circuit, what do you have to do? You have to open circuit these two terminals A and B. Now you have to watch the circuit from this side from open terminals A and B. And why I left this? Because you know that to find out the value of resistance here, you have to kill all the sources. So whenever you have to kill the voltage source, you have to replace it by short circuit. Now I am going to replace it by short circuit. So it can be replaced like this. So this is the kind of network we are left with to find out the value of Rn. Now when I watch this circuit from this side, I can see that these two resistances are in parallel. So very easily I can find out the value of these two uh, equal, uh, I can find out the value of Rn. So here this is 6 into 3 divided by 6 plus 3. This is a parallel combination. So here 18 by 9. So you are getting 2 ohms. So value of Rn came out to be 2 ohms. 
this is the way how you are going to tackle these kind of questions how you are going to um, calculate the value of Norton's current and how you are going to calculate the value of Norton's resistance and then after that you know that the equivalent circuit would look something like this here you are having current and you know that you have chosen these two uh, uh, you can say that these two terminals A and B across which the current is flowing like this so here I can replace it by this symbol for current and here this current came out to be 12 ohms and now it is connected in parallel with the resistance that is the Norton's resistance and its value is 2 ohms and after that it is connected to terminals A and B having the load resistance equal to 2 ohms. So this is the kind of equivalent circuit, equivalent Norton's circuit that you will get. So it is very easy to find out the value of Norton's current and Norton's resistance. Only your fundamentals should be clear how you are going to calculate all these values.